opportunity to participate in this meeting to the same extent possible uh, as an in-person meeting. Our corporate secretary, Mr. Masuda, will now share the rules of conduct and voting procedures uh, for this meeting. Mr. Mr. Chairman, the rules of conduct and voting procedures are set forth in the definitive information statement and in the explanation of agenda items, which forms part of the notice of the annual stockholders meeting. I would just like to highlight to our stockholders the following points. Number one, the agenda for this meeting covers a range of matters requiring stockholders vote and was included in the notice sent to stockholders for this meeting. The stockholders were also provided an opportunity to propose matters for inclusion in the agenda, pursuant to applicable rules and regulations and our internal guidelines. Number two, stockholders who registered under the electronic voting in absentia and shareholder system that we refer to as VIAS, and notified the company by email to corporate secretary at ayala.com.ph by April 14, 2021, of their intention to participate in this meeting by remote communi communication, may send their questions or comments to the same email address. Number three, Celeste Jovenier, our head of investor relations, will read the questions or comments received before 9.30 a.m. today during the Q&A period which will take place after other matters under item eight of the agenda. Management will reply to questions and comments not taken up during the meeting by email. Number four, as indicated in the ballot for the voting of the stockholders, there are five resolutions proposed for adoption by the stockholders in this meeting. Each proposed resolution will be shown on the screen as the same is being taken up. Number five, stockholders could cast their votes through the VIA system on the proposed resolutions and in the election of directors beginning March 31, 2021 until the end of this meeting. Six, alternatively, we have provided the stockholders the option to appoint the chairman as proxy. And number seven, uh, lastly, Mr. Chairman, we have tabulated the votes cast as of close of business of April 21, 2021. Those votes are from stockholders owning 666,604,535 voting shares, representing 99.99% .99 of the total voting shares represented in this meeting, and 80.56% of the total outstanding voting shares. I will be referring to the, to the results of this tabulation when I report the voting results throughout this meeting. The results of the final tabulation of votes with full details of the affirmative and negative votes and abstentions will be reflected in the minutes of this meeting. We thank our stockholders who have voted through the BS system and by proxy. We, are, we encourage all stockholders attending today to vote the using the VIA system, which will remain open until the end of this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you also, Mr. Secretary. The next order of business is the approval of the minutes of the annual stockholders meeting held on April 24, 2020. An electronic copy is available on the website uh, of the corporation. I'll now ask our secretary to present the proposed resolution and the voting results uh, on, on this item. Mr. Chairman, management is proposing the adoption of resolution number S-01-2021 for the approval of the minutes of the annual meeting on April 24, 2020. The resolution is shown on the screen. Stockholders owning 666,604,535 shares or 99.99% .99 of the total voting shares represented in this year meeting voted in favor of this resolution. Therefore, resolution number S-01-2021 has been approved. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the annual report, uh, which consists of a message from the chairman, uh, the report of the president, and an audiovisual 
uh, presentation. Uh, at this point, if you'll allow me uh, to deliver my pre-recorded uh, message. Fellow shareholders, a pleasant morning to you all. Over a year ago, on March 11th, 2020, the WHO declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. We could not have imagined then, dire as it already was at that time, that the pandemic would stretch well beyond one year and keep going. That what began as a health crisis would stretch into a complex combination of four crises rolled into one, a health, social, economic, and even a geopolitical crisis. Yet the pandemic story would be incomplete if we focused only on its devastation. While the pandemic exposed inadequacies in our healthcare system, it also showcased the sublime courage, skill, and resourcefulness of our frontliners. Yes, the pandemic led to social dislocation as mobility restrictions cleared our highways of traffic and our malls from meetups. Yet technology and digital infrastructure ramped up to power industries to multiply connections and dialogue by cutting travel time from one meeting to the next. And for many, Working from home restored connections with families we had previously seen less often than our own workmates. Yes, the pandemic led to the worst economic contraction recorded in many parts of the world. In the Philippines, our economy declined by 9.5%. Yet the pandemic also showcased the best of our Bayanihan spirit, helping those who were challenged to help themselves. Such has been the narrative for Ayala Corporation in 2020 as well. Like many companies, our bottom line has been severely impacted. But under the extenuating circumstances, I am pleased that the Ayala Group has weathered the economic challenge as well, made decisive and balanced trade-offs between short-term pivots and long-term sustainability, and that we have continued to be a force for growth and a force for good for our varied stakeholders. We have acted with agility in consonance with our purpose and mission and our position to capitalize on the new opportunities that the pandemic has also presented. This crisis has put to the test some of the institutional foundations that we at Ayala have established throughout our 187-year history. In times of extreme adversity, we're fortunate to be able to leverage the strength of our established principles and the distinct advantages we have as a multi-business group. We used established cross-functional synergies and robust corporate infrastructure to quickly mobilize. More importantly, our teams across our business units demonstrated admirable commitment and engagement and continue to respond, adjust, and recalibrate in this dynamically changing environment. Let me expand on this by touching on three broad themes, which I believe appropriately represent the past year and set the foundation for how our group is positioned for the long term. First. Let me highlight how a balanced portfolio and years of risk resilient financial discipline serve as an important foundation to help us pivot our businesses. We accelerated growth in resilient industries and business units such as Globe and AC Energy and with products such as Gcash and DPI Online. On the other hand, we minimized the impact on severely disrupted business sectors such as in our malls and tourism business verticals. Second, I will touch on how our group, as part of an immediate and continuing response to the crisis, prioritized protecting three concentric circles of stakeholders, our employees, our broad business ecosystem, and the community at large, all in aid of nation building. Third and finally, I will share my perspectives on how we are capitalizing on opportunities during this period of disruption and innovation across varied industries while positioning ourselves for the post-pandemic recovery. Please allow me to elaborate on each of these three themes. First, our balanced portfolio in years of risk-resilient financial discipline served as our strategic advantage in navigating through a severely disrupted business landscape. As with most businesses, the mobility restrictions, loss of income, dampened consumer sentiment, and the overall slowdown in economic activity weighed heavily on Ayala's performance during the year. However, we take comfort in the fact that the diversified nature of our portfolio has positioned us well to temper the full effect of the crisis. We have, over the years, made both strategic 
and opportunistic adjustments to our portfolio to counteract volatility across multiple economic cycles. And with the clarity of hindsight, that served us well in 2020. While the crisis affected three of our businesses, Ayala Lam, BPI, and AC Industrials, the impact on our overall performance was offset by the resilience of Globe and AC Energy. Moreover, we are reaping the fruits of the transformation initiatives we undertook a few years back, as the crisis essentially catalyzed the tremendous potential of digital technologies and digital adoption. We saw unprecedented adoption of e-wallets, e-payments, e-commerce, telemedicine, and online learning, amongst others. Two of the country's top three digital finance platforms are Ayala Assets. Gcash and BPI Online were early entrants into the space and supported by robust and user-friendly technology platforms, we were ready to meet or adapt to the rapidly changing needs of customers. Since the entry of Ag Financial as a strategic partner in 2017, Mint, which operates Gcash, continues to grow and create value. Gcash is now the number one finance app in the country, serving over 33 million users, or one in every three Filipinos. Last year, the value of transactions that passed through Gcash crossed the 1 trillion peso mark, which is double that of the combined totals for the three-year period of 2017 to 2019. Gcash recently attracted 175 million US dollars in fresh capital, including an investment from Bowwave, a New York-based private equity fund. With a post-money valuation of nearly 1 billion US dollars, this investment validates Gcash as a formidable player in contributing to and transforming financial services in the country. Similarly, BPI's foresight in embarking on a digital transformation program five years ago has paid off. Enrollments and usage surged during the pandemic across the bank's online platforms as businesses adjusted to new ways of handling transactions during a period of limited mobility. Bizlet, which offers digital solutions for corporate clients, as well as BPI Online and BPI Mobile, our channels for customers' everyday banking needs, now constitute an average of 70% of the bank's total transactions. Moving forward, BPI intends to become the undisputed leader in digital banking in the country by broadening access to online platforms for all our customers, regardless of size, and introducing value-added services for both the corporate and retail segments. We also expect the bank to work even more closely with Gcash to extract further synergies between the two leading financial mobile apps in the country. In tandem with our balanced portfolio, our years of risk-resilient discipline with respect to financial management generated sufficient absorption capacity to protect our balance sheet. This judicious approach served us well during both the Asian crisis back in 1997 and the global financial crisis that hit us in 2008. It served us well again in 2020. Our group's robust balance sheet enabled us to continue executing on our investment pipeline. We leveraged the favorable debt market conditions last year to raise capital that will enable us to preserve financial sustainability, as well as create the capacity for opportunistic investments. Ayala Land, DPI, Globe, and Manila Water raised around three billion US dollars in combined proceeds from various domestic and international capital raising exercises. The successful capital raising exercises executed across the group during this period of economic uncertainty is a testament to the strength of the Ayala brand. I believe that foresight, active portfolio management, and an innovative mindset have enabled us to not only survive, but flourish during this period of economic uncertainty and stress. Moving on to the second broad theme, we strongly believe that our ability to sustain attractive business returns over many years and through various economic cycles requires that our host ecosystem survives and ideally, of course, thrives. Thus, in responding to the pandemic, we prioritized protecting three concentric circles of stakeholders. The first circle was our Ayala Group's over 60,000 employees. The second circle was the broader business ecosystem in which we operate. And the third circle was composed of the communities and the country we serve. Our support was necessarily proactive and generous. 
Over March to December 2020, the Ella Group disbursed a total of 13.2 billion pesos for our pandemic response initiatives. First, from the start of this difficult period, our top of mind priority was to protect our employees, ensuring their peace of mind, assuring them of financial stability and protecting their physical health and safety. To ensure that our teams felt financially secure during this period of stress, we rolled out an emergency assistance package for our employees, as well as for those who provide contractual services to the Ayala Group, including, of course, personnel, maintenance staff, and construction workers, who would otherwise have been in a no-work, no-pay dilemma. The financial assistance consisted of a mix of wages, leave conversions, loan deferments, and advance release of employee bonuses. To help address the health and safety concerns of our employees, we set up employee exclusive hotlines to doctors and for medicines and built a COVID-19 facility specifically dedicated for them and their families in the event that the traditional hospitals got too full to accommodate them. To ensure continuity of business and customer service, we implemented protocols to ensure the safety of our critical, essential frontliners who needed to physically report to the workplace. We provided tools of work for the majority of our employees so that they could also productively work from home. Lastly, through Ayala-funded online courses, we encouraged employees to enhance or learn new skills that will help them better adapt to a digitally technology-wide future of work. After protecting our employees, the second phase was to ensure that our business ecosystem stayed in place as we collectively tried to recover. The Ayala Group has always believed that our success is intertwined with the success of the broader ecosystem in which we operate. Ayala Land was the first to implement rent combinations to its small merchants, while BPI was among the first financial institutions to offer a grace period for loan payments. Similarly, Globe and Manila Water provided grace periods for bill payments, all consistent with the economic stimulus package put in place during the crisis. Within this business ecosystem, we realized that certain segments would need particular focus. We have around 250,000 SMEs and around 1 million micro enterprises that are linked to us as clients and partners across our various businesses. The pandemic's impact on them was more massive. It was imperative that we provide them with support and help, alleviating some of the pain points that they all faced. Hence, we launched the Ayala Enterprise Circle as a support network for the group's SME partners to help them navigate the crisis by providing business solutions, expert mentorship, training, and business matching opportunities. Three, after our employees in our business ecosystem, the third circle of stakeholders was the community at large in aid of national recovery. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic struck, the Ayala Group has been working on programs around the evolving, expanded role of private institutions in society. I strongly believe that our expanded role is to help address the pain points of the community at large and of the nation even, not just of our shareholders, and to be more inclusive in purpose than the singular focus on profit that The Economist, Milton Friedman of the University of Chicago, espoused a little over 50 years ago. This pandemic has made it even more urgent and important for us to be inclusive in our survival and recovery efforts. This pandemic has been most democratic sparing no one, but its effects have been much more devastating on society's already vulnerable segments than on larger, more buffered, and diversified entities like ours. I believe that our sustainable recovery as private institutions can happen only if the communities that support us and work with us also survive and thrive. They need us now, more than ever, to share in their adversity. And it cuts both ways. We also need them the entire ecosystem to recover and thrive so as to ensure our sustainable prosperity. With this philosophy guiding our actions, the Ayala Group spearheaded a number of community projects, including Project Ignayan, a peer partnership among the private sector that galvanized action to address the immediate food needs of the economically vulnerable families who were caught flat-footed when community quarantine was declared last year. Project Ignayan was an unprecedented level of cooperation among private sector companies that are normally fierce competitors in the business landscape. Many of the biggest donors committed their support within 48 hours. In all, 270 companies contributed and raised 
1.7 billion pesos worth of emergency relief assistance and distributed this by enlisting the machinery of PDRF and the Catholic Church to over 14 million individuals. We were steadfast in our mission to contribute towards rebuilding the nation. Among many other community-based initiatives, the Ayala Group also led in converting the World Trade Center into a massive quarantine facility and donated a number of molecular testing laboratories and significant quantities of medical supplies to local government units. We continue to work in partnership with the government to help address society's pain points. As a founding member of Project T3, a private sector-led initiative, we help raise our national capacity for testing, treating, tracing, and isolating patients and patient suspect cases. Presently, we're among the leading private sector firms supporting the government in planning and implementing the national vaccination program. On the second theme, perhaps among the pandemic's enduring lessons, are the imperative for inclusive recovery and the power of unlocking greater cooperation among private companies in between the public and private sectors. It is encouraging to see this collaborative approach towards the creation of meaningful, scaled solutions in combating COVID-19 and building back better towards inclusive recovery. This brings me to the third and final point, how our group is capitalizing on opportunities amidst the massive shifts taking place and how we are positioned for a post-pandemic recovery. Alongside adversity, there is always opportunity. First, while the pandemic exposed inadequacies and massive underinvestment in the country's healthcare system, the crisis also reinforced our thesis for entering this industry over five years ago. Healthcare is an industry that is ripe for intervention and disruption. In 2015, when we started investing in healthcare, we saw that it had increasingly become an important sector in the country for several reasons. Households were beginning to spend more on health and wellness. The government was increasing its healthcare investments, and health outcomes were so poor that there was significant headroom for growth. Today, COVID-19 has exponentially expanded the value of the healthcare sector. Despite the deep 9.5% economic contraction that the Philippines experienced last year, the healthcare sector expanded by 13.8% due to increasing investments by local players and foreign partners. AC Health is scaling up its portfolio to take advantage of the momentum in the healthcare ecosystem. Last February, AC Health completed the acquisition of a majority stake in QualiMed Health Network, which operates a chain of hospitals and clinics, expanding its service delivery network by providing healthcare at the tertiary level. The addition of QualiMed to AC Health's portfolio complements its 85 outpatient clinics and 80 corporate clinics under the HealthWay brand as well as the country's first specialty cancer hospital, which is set to open in 2023. AC Health also launched a telemedicine solution that provided an alternative medical consultation solution alongside online purchasing of medicines and scheduling of on-site clinic appointments. We're now looking at utilizing this platform for vaccination scheduling and monitoring. Second, this crisis has accelerated the digital transformation of both the Filipino consumers as well as the Filipino workplace. To this end, we have seen examples of how our investments in digital infrastructure are paying forward, most specifically how the digital platforms of both DPI and GCash have enabled individuals to make critical transactions, sending money to family far away and making purchases and bill payments from the safety of their homes. This digital infrastructure will power many more industries, perhaps virtually all industries in the future health, education, banking, manufacturing, commerce, travel, entertainment, and many more. Among these is logistics, where the pandemic highlighted massive gaps in this fragmented industry. Having seen the country's requirement for efficient and reliable logistics to complement the rise of the digital economy, we entered the industry three years ago through our last mile delivery platform, Entrego. Entrego, leveraging its nationwide reach, has gained a foothold serving major e-commerce players in the country. The company ramped up its operations significantly over the past year, with revenues growing 10 times since 2018 and volume of packages delivered doubling since the start of the pandemic. We are looking to further develop our logistics portfolio in a more meaningful way and are looking at opportunities to expand our presence across the broader supply logistics chain, including contract logistics and freight forwarding. 
A third set of opportunities, aside from healthcare and digitalization, lies in the area of sustainability and of ESG proofing our businesses. AC Energy is a prime example in our portfolio. Global investors and pandemic realizations have triggered the demand for affordable, reliable, renewable, and sustainable power. AC Energy intends to play a leading role in this energy transition process with a strategy that emphasizes building a low carbon portfolio. It is working towards fully divesting its thermal assets by 2030 as it aspires to be the largest listed renewables platform in Southeast Asia. With 1.9 gigawatts of renewable capacity to date, AC Energy has established a meaningful presence in Vietnam, Australia, Indonesia, and India, in addition to the Philippines. It is poised to exceed its goal of 5 gigawatts of renewable capacity by 2025. AC Energy's rapid transition to renewables has attracted strategic partnerships from blue chip institutions such as GIC, Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is acquiring a 17.5% stake in the company. We're excited about these opportunities and look forward to taking part in the critical transformations happening in all these industries. Looking ahead, we will be doing our part to help spur the economy through continued investment spending and have allocated 196 billion pesos in combined capital expenditure for 2021. The Ayala Group feels positive about our medium-term trajectory and anticipates an economic revival mid-2023 back to the levels of 2019. This is premised on the successful execution of the country's vaccination rollout beginning later this year, thus restoring, we believe, consumer confidence and will be powered by the Ayala Group's focused execution to secure and maintain market leadership in our core industries and significant presence in emerging industries. Traditionally, this is the point where I would normally conclude the Chairman's message. After providing a look back at 2020, and of course, a look ahead at 2021. But this is an unusual year, so I hope you'll allow me this year to look further back than the past one year and look further ahead than the current and immediate next year. We shared with you last December 2020 that today, after the annual stockholders meeting, we will transition the position of Chief Executive Officer of Ayala Corporation from me to my brother, Fernando, who will then be designated President and CEO of Ayala Corporation. I will continue as chairman of the Ayala board and will continue to represent Ayala as chairman or vice chairman, retaining my current roles in the subsidiary boards of various Ayala group companies. Retaining these roles as chairman or vice chairman will allow me to continue providing support to our management teams across the group. Focusing on my role as chairman of the Ayala Corporation will create space for me to focus on governance and strengthen connections with our many partners, customers and employees across the group as we seek to broaden and deepen our stakeholder engagement going forward. At Ayala, we have built a culture of welcoming change and encouraging transitions. I see myself as no different from the many others who have provided leadership across the group over many, many years. Each leader added value in myriad ways and saw it as their responsibility to nurture talent and create paths of succession. It is through this path of deliberate renewal that organizations grow, prosper, and adapt creatively and sustainably to the changing economic, social, and environmental landscape. It is through this process of intentional succession planning that we have the luxury of a deep leadership bench positioned for continuing success. As I look back at my 26-year tenure as CEO and 40 years as an Ayala employee, I'm proud of having been part of a continuing path of progressive transformation in the company. The role of institutions continues to evolve, and I like to think that we have been at the forefront of these changing paradigms. We strongly believe that in order to build a legacy of long-term value creation, we must also remain relevant to the changing needs of our customers, our investors, and the communities we interact with. We are part of the fabric of a broader community of stakeholders and increasingly participate in a society that seeks progress in a way that sustains its well-being well into the future. Across these last 26 years, Ayala has developed products and services that are significantly more inclusive to broader segments of our population, has used technology and disruption to transform the way customers experience life, and has consistently committed capital and a growing balance sheet to address the vital social 
and hard infrastructure bottlenecks that we face as a country. I believe this clarity of mission and steadfast commitment have continued to make us relevant to the changing nature of our country, that we have contributed in our own way to our communal desire to see a progressive evolution of our society. Moving beyond our national shores, the world is also increasingly aligning to new global standards. And we're proud to have an institution that has provided leadership on this front by aligning to the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the broader initiatives that conform to the new accepted ESG frameworks. Finally, we are proud to have developed a community of talented, driven, imaginative, and problem-solving teams that relish challenges and whose values are parallel to those in leadership across the group. This difficult year, I have to tell you, has brought us closer together and built a commonality of purpose and joint engagement. I could not be prouder of having been part of this great team of progressive, driven, and enlightened executives, and I wanted to thank them here publicly. As the incoming CEO, Fernando has successfully provided leadership across a variety of Ayala Group companies for more than two decades now, and he is eminently suited to continue providing executive momentum in his new role as President and CEO of Ayala. Both Fernando and I have worked as a leadership team for over two decades now, and we intend to continue charting Ayala's path forward in tandem. Fernando will bring his own brand of leadership to the task at hand, and he will highlight his own points of emphasis during his own president's report. It is in this light that I also want to thank our board of directors for their constant guidance and foresight. They've all made themselves available to us beyond the formal structure of our meetings. Our leadership teams as well, and our colleagues across the entire Ayala group for their deep commitment and engagement across many fronts. And of course, to you, my fellow stockholders, for your unwavering trust and support. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I now uh, turn you over to our president, the chief operating officer, uh, Mr. Fernando Zobel de Ayala, uh, for his report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, fellow shareholders. Please allow me to present my report, which has also been pre-recorded. shareholders, members of the board, our colleagues in Ayala, good morning. Please allow me to start on behalf of our stakeholders and our board by thanking our chairman for his exceptional and dedicated leadership of Ayala over the past 26 years. In the 26 years of Jaime's tenure as CEO, Ayala Corporation delivered an outstanding track record of creating shareholder value. Since 1995, our market capitalization expanded more than sixfold. Our net income similarly grew more than six times. Since 1995, we rewarded our shareholders with dependable returns that averaged at 15% per annum. Over that period, we cumulatively paid 118 billion pesos in dividends to our common shareholders. But perhaps even more than the admirable financial track record over the past 26 years, we laud and thank Jaime for a five-point legacy, which is foundational and strategic, and upon which Ayala Corporation will build and propel sustainable returns for generations to come. First, our portfolio mix is stronger, expanded, more diversified, and balanced. We cemented market leadership in our established businesses in real estate and banking. We expanded the societal segments we served and consequently broadened our set of products and services to address more and different customer needs. We invested in transformative, deep need or high growth business verticals, such as telecommunications, water, energy, health, education and logistics, where we created meaningful disruption and continued to build scalable and sustainable market share positions either organically or with strategic partners. Second, we have developed a culture of relevant and relentless innovation, constantly seeking to disrupt even ourselves 
and spark new industries. Our inspired teams leveraged our group synergies, our rich data and investments in technology, and our strong balance sheet so as to remain relevant to the dynamically changing needs of our customers. Third, we have a rigorous financial management discipline that time and again has been tested and proven. This has enabled us to make decisive investments to capitalize on opportunities and provided risk resilience in times of crisis, including the challenges of the current COVID-19 crisis. Fourth, Jaime championed Ayala's pioneering efforts to align our ambition and metrics with world-class standards for sustainability and environmental, social, and corporate governance. And fifth, with a clarity of purpose and constancy of action, Jaime led in placing Ayala at the forefront of the evolving role of corporations to address society's pain points, to create inclusive and sustainable prosperity for all stakeholders, and to aid in nation building. Jaime, on behalf of our shareholders and management, we thank you. This five-point legacy, among many others you have modeled, are strategic advantages that strongly position Ayala Corporation for future sustainable growth across varied economic cycles. 2020 was a stress test for these foundational strengths of Ayala Corporation. The crisis undeniably weighed on our financial performance, especially in areas which were severely affected by the mobility restrictions, business slowdown, and unemployment. However, the pandemic also presented opportunities for agile pivots in our established businesses with Globe, BPI, and Ayala Land, for example, launching new or enhanced digital products and bolstering servicing support for their digital channels. It also unlocked opportunities for accelerated benefits from transformative investments that we made in nascent businesses a few years ago. The crisis buoyed sectors such as health and wellness, e-commerce, online banking, and logistics. It reinforced the demand for sufficiency and dependability in the supply of essential goods, such as water, food, power, and the new normal digital connectivity. For the full year 2020, Ayala reported a net income of 17 billion pesos, 51% lower than the previous year. Much of the decline is attributed to non-recurring items such as provisions booked by our various businesses, an accounting reclassification, and the non-recurrence of divestment gains from our power and education units, which were realized in the previous year. If we exclude these non-recurring drivers, the year-on-year -year contraction in our net profits was relatively muted at 16%. Encouragingly, across our businesses, we saw quarter-on-quarter -quarter recovery in the second half of 2020. Ayala's reported net income grew 69% to 5.8 billion pesos in the fourth quarter versus the third quarter. Excluding non-recurring items, our core net income improved 46% to 6.8 billion pesos during the same period. The better performance of Ayala Land, Manila Water, and AC Industrials all contributed to Ayala's quarter and quarter improvement. The diverse and balanced nature of our Ayala portfolio and the swift and dynamic actions we took mitigated the severity of the pandemic's impact on our 2020 results. I will touch on more specific key drivers for the different business units in this later section. In response to the rapidly and unpredictably changing conditions last year, we instituted mechanisms to shift from our traditionally longer-term planning horizons to much more compressed timeframes. Our management committee met frequently to review our plans on a two-week, two-month, and two-quarter rolling basis. This intense executional focus allowed us to pivot our businesses, fast-track and launch enhanced products and services, support our ecosystem, and contribute meaningfully to the national response and recovery agenda. Let me now touch on the performance of our key business units in greater detail. Ayala Land was one of the most affected business units in the Ayala Group during the crisis. Its net income fell 74% to 
to 8.7 billion pesos as mobility restrictions impeded mall and hotel operations, dampened residential demand, and slowed or halted construction activity. On the other hand, the office segment remains strong, supported by the resilience of the BPO industry. Ayala Land launched a number of hybrid and digital channels to help meet the consumer need for contactless delivery of goods and services, such as basic groceries and even the sale and turnover of real estate property. In spite of the mobility restrictions and altered purchasing priorities, residential sales of Ayala Land reached 56% of its 2019 or pre-COVID levels. With protracted mobility restrictions, and uncertain recovery risk scenarios, Ayala Land focused on preserving its value by keeping its asset base intact. It ensured strong cash flow and strengthened its balance sheet. It deferred plans to acquire new land, tempered project launches, and rationalized spending. Capital expenditure was likewise significantly reduced. I'm happy to report that for 2021, Ayala Land has programmed 88 billion pesos in capital expenditures and is prepared to launch a hundred billion worth of residential projects as it prepares for the recovery in the next two to three years. Despite a challenging period and a host of regulatory hurdles, Ayala Land successfully completed the IPO of AREIT, the first real estate investment trust in the country. This landmark capital market transaction, which raised 12.3 billion pesos in proceeds, demonstrated Ayala Land's commitment to establish a REIT sector in the Philippines and encouraged greater participation by Filipinos in the domestic capital market. This pioneering initiative has likewise led to a stronger interest from other property developers to launch their own REIT vehicles. With a massive drop in economic activity, Bank of the Philippine Islands was likewise heavily impacted by the pandemic. To prepare for the potential rise in non-performing loans, BPI booked total loan loss provisions of 28 billion pesos in 2020, a five-fold increase from its year-ago level. This caused net income to fall 26% to 21 billion pesos. For the first time in almost a decade of double-digit growth, BPI's loan book contracted 3.2%, following a sharp decline in loan demand and deteriorating loan quality. NPLs rose from 1.7% a year ago to 2.7% in 2020. This is substantially lower than the industry average. We believe this is a reflection of the bank's strong credit discipline. Over the past three years, we intensified BPI's digital transformation investing the equivalent of 8% of the bank's revenues towards our ambition for BPI to be the undisputed leader in digital banking in the Philippines. The pandemic accelerated the adoption of remote digital banking channels with thousands enrolling in BPI's digital channels. 52% of the bank's customers are now digitally enabled. More than half of them are active users and an average of 70% of total transactions are now done online. BPI is supposed to deliver on its goal of being the leading digital bank, with its BPI online app already the leading online banking app during the pandemic. Digital connectivity is the highway of the new normal and will power most, if not virtually all industries in the future. Globe Telecom is front and center of this digital revolution. To continue fulfilling the country's growing need for fast and reliable internet access, Globe Telecom invested 60 billion pesos in capital expenditure in 2020, 18% higher than in 2019. Despite operating under severe mobility restrictions, Globe built nearly 1,300 new cell sites and upgraded more than 11,500 sites to 4G LTE technology surpassing the year-ago achievements of 1,100 and 10,000, respectively. Globe also deployed 5G sites in Metro Manila and parts of the Visayas and Mindanao, making it available in over 1,000 areas in the country. However, depreciation from these aggressive network investments drove a 16% decline in Globe's net profit 
to 18.6 billion pesos. With many Filipinos going to their homes to conduct their work, learning, shopping, and entertainment activities, Globe experienced a shift in demand from mobile data to home broadband. We expect a significant portion of these behavioral shifts to continue this year, more so because of the recent surge in COVID-19 cases and the renewed mobility restrictions. This demand for home broadband is reflected in Globe's capital spending earmarked for 2021. A record 70 billion pesos in capital spending to execute on its network rollout strategy. PPI and Globe's experience in 2020 demonstrated the central role of digitalization for many industries where our Ayala Group is represented and well positioned. E-commerce with Ayala Malls and Zalora, last mile logistics with Entrego, e-payments with BPI and Gcash, remote or distance learning with iPeople, and telemedicine and prescription fulfillment with AC Health. AC Energy has set a bold goal to build five gigawatts of renewables by 2025 and become one of the largest listed renewables platforms in Southeast Asia. In 2020, AC Energy posted a net income of 6.2 billion pesos, a decline from its year ago level of 25 billion pesos due to the absence of significant gains from the partial divestment of its thermal assets in 2019. AC Energy's attributable output grew 38% to 4,847 gigawatt hours, with 41% of this output coming from renewable sources. AC Energy is transitioning to a low carbon portfolio and has committed to divest all its coal assets by 2030. AC Energy continued its aggressive geographical expansion and now currently operates in five markets, the Philippines, Vietnam, India, Indonesia, and Australia where we recently started construction of a wind project. Equity earnings from international assets increased 68% to 2.5 billion pesos, supported by full year operations of solar assets in Vietnam. AC Energy's rapid expansion is producing a steady rise in earnings contribution from its various platforms. Net income contribution from its listed subsidiary, AC Energy Corporation or ASEN, reached 2.8 billion pesos, reversing a net loss in the previous year. This was lifted by higher contracted capacity and improved plant availability. ASEN now accounts for half of AC Energy Group's net income. Meanwhile, in our other utility business, Manila Water's focus has been to provide ample and consistent water supply to its concession area throughout the pandemic. The Manila Water Group continue to deliver the necessary infrastructure towards the fulfillment of its service obligations, spending 12.1 billion in capital expenditures. Of this amount, 81% was channeled to the East Zone concession to carry out various projects on wastewater expansion, network reliability, and water supply. However, the shift in customer mix towards the residential segment with a lower tariff bracket some softness in collection efficiency, and the one-time provision for probable losses in the East Zone concession, combined with lower contribution from domestic subsidiaries, weighed down Manila Water's profitability. Its net income fell 18% to 4.5 billion pesos during the year. In February 2021, we announced the execution of an agreement with Trident Water of the Razon Group for the latter's acquisition of a significant stake in Manila Water. Once the transaction is completed, Trident Water will own a 33.2% economic stake and a 51% voting interest in Manila Water, while Ayala's economic stake will decrease to 30.4% and our voting interest to 31.6%. We are very excited about this partnership. We believe that leveraging the complementary skills of both groups will allow us to manage this regulated business better and will give us more opportunities to expand locally and internationally. At AC Industrials, we see a recovery following a spate of geopolitical and industry-specific challenges. From a loss of 2.4 billion pesos in 2019, AC Industrials narrowed its losses to 1.8 billion pesos in 2020, despite manufacturing disruptions during the year. 
More encouragingly, AC Industrials posted a net profit in the fourth quarter after restoring plant operations to full capacity, improving factory efficiency, and optimizing margins from contract negotiations. With these adjustments, AC Industrial's array of disruptive technology is poised to ride on emerging megatrends around autonomous vehicles, more electronic components in automobiles, and green energy. We have also been looking for opportunities to unlock and monetize value. One such opportunity came by way of the listing of IMI subsidiary, VA Optronics, a leading supplier of enhanced display solutions on the New York Stock Exchange. VF's IPO resulted in proceeds of US $94 million and a valuation that implied a 34% gain from our acquisition price. We entered healthcare with AC Health five years ago, knowing that Ayala could use its resources to solve one of Philippine society's critical pain points while creating value for shareholders. Little did we know then how soon and how scaled those solutions would need to be. This pandemic has dramatically heightened government, institutional, and consumer focus on healthcare and exposed an immense need for short-term solutions as well as opportunities for long-term systemic and structural disruption and innovation. In 2020, our AC Health completed the integration of its family, multi-specialty, and corporate clinics into one Healthway brand to become the largest network of clinics in the country. This, together with the addition of the QualiMed Health Network, in partnership with GLOBE, significantly expands AC Health's participation in the different parts of overall patient care. Investors are increasingly choosing to invest in corporations that adhere to world-class standards of sustainability and the environmental, social, and governance. Ayala, we have been these global standards. our parent net debt to the total value of our assets at a healthy 9.2%. Our balance sheet, strong as it is, comes only after and because of our strongest, most valued asset, our team of over 60,000 employees. We're incredibly proud of them and grateful to them. They have been focused, dedicated, creative, and resourceful to find solutions that help restore order to chaos adapted to changing customer needs and unlocked short and long-term value. The depth of talent and synergy between our varied teams gives us confidence about the senior leadership transitions we announced last December. Aside from Jaime and I who are transitioning in our roles, three other senior leaders will take on new responsibilities. Ayala Corporation CFO, TG Lim Kauko, will take the helm at BPI as president and CEO upon the retirement of his predecessor, Bong Kon Singh. Bong will continue to be engaged with and invaluable to the group as a member of the board of directors of BPI, Ayala Corporation, and AC Energy Corporation. PG Limcalco has been with the Ayala Group for over 20 years, holding various positions at the parent level and at the bank. He is intimately familiar with BPI, having spent many years in the bank with a deep experience in retail and investment banking. We are extremely grateful to PG 
for how he transformed the CFO role at Ayala Corporation by bringing a holistic approach to our investment, capital allocation, and overall strategic and financial decision-making process. He has driven the Ayala Group's efforts to ensure our alignment with the evolving global standards for ESG, resulting in the creation of measurable targets and tangible results. The thinking and discipline he instituted around financial management, portfolio strategy, and business development have positioned us well in surviving the crisis and preparing for a post-pandemic economic recovery. PG, we are extremely grateful for all your enormous contributions. Thank you. Albert de la Razabal will succeed PG as the CFO. Albert has been with the Ayala Group for 15 years, having held various senior positions at Globe as its CFO and most recently as its Chief Commercial Officer, overseeing all customer-facing units and revenue growth across all products and service groups. Albert brings a wealth of experience in finance, treasury, risk, and commercial operations at the holding company level. Prior to joining Globe, he was CFO at another major Philippine corporation, having performed various finance functions in his 18-year stint in that company. We have appointed Eric Francia, current president and CEO of AC Energy, to concurrently chair Ayala Corporation's Investment Committee. Joining Eric in this committee are Albert de Lara Sabal, our in incoming CFO, and Paolo Borromeo, head of our Strategic Development Unit. The committee's mandate is to drive our portfolio management agenda and provide recommendations for an investment portfolio that delivers sustainable value and impact. Over the past 10 years, Eric successfully led AC Energy from a standing start to become one of the fastest growing renewable energy platforms in the region and one of Ayala's core businesses. Eric's successful experience in business building, realizing value, and reinvesting for growth will be valuable for this new and expanded role. As the incoming president and CEO, I am very excited about these transitions and the opportunities ahead of us. I aim to build on the firm foundation that Jaime established, guided by our core strategy of maintaining leadership and relevance in the markets we serve. To support this, we will place greater emphasis on our portfolio strategy with a sharper focus on optimizing returns from existing businesses, a highly disciplined approach on capital deployment, and explore opportunities for value realization initiatives to fund future investments. We will fully support the continued expansion of our core value drivers, Ayala Land, BPI, Globe, and AC Energy, and scale up our emerging businesses in healthcare, education, and logistics. In addition, we will be more proactive in recycling capital across the group to support our growth strategy and strengthen our balance sheet further. We have seen recent examples of these initiatives, including the IPO of Ayala Land's REIT platform, the entry of GIC as a strategic partner at ASEN, the upcoming entry of the Razon Group in Manila Water, as well as the IPO of IMI's Vioptronics at the NYSE, as I mentioned earlier. We are cautiously optimistic about the business environment and will continue to prepare for a post-pandemic economic recovery. We are hoping for a successful implementation of the country's vaccination program that would pave the way for a revival of the economy. We expect our business operations to return to the 2019 levels by 2023. With a healthy balance sheet and a set of diversified and strong franchises in our portfolio, we are confident that we will come out of this difficult period stronger. I will continue to work closely with Jaime, as well as our exceptional management team and our board of directors. We thank all our stakeholders for the trust and support despite all the challenges that we have faced. Thank you for continuing to take this journey with us. More than a year into battling this pandemic, it has been truly inspiring to see how everyone has come together to offer help and solutions to our daily challenges. Given the many critical services that the Ayala Group provides in the country, we're deeply grateful for the dedication and hard work 
of all our colleagues in the Ayala group to ensure that important services were not interrupted. To pay tribute to our colleagues, we created and developed an online publication that we call Ayala Chronicle 2020, where we compiled more than 100 stories of hope, resilience, and quiet heroism of our employees across the group. We took some of the best personal stories of our employees that best ex exemplify what Ayala's commitment to nation building means. This is what Pangako means to us. Please watch our video. Ito ang paggarantisa na tuloy ang aral, trabaho at negosyo para sa lahat. Ito ang pagkalinga sa kabataan upang mapagpatuloy nila ang pag-abot sa mga pangarap. Magbago man ang panahon, hahanap tayo ng pagkakataon. Pagbuhos ito ng alaga at atensyon sa mga lugar na kailangan ng tulong at suporta. Ito yung patuloy na paghanap ng paraan at paggawa ng diskarte para sa kabubuti ng lahat. Pagiging pamilya siya sa mga taong di nakamalapit at malapit sa iyo. Pagiging nanay ko ito sa mga tinuturing ko na ding mga anak. Sa bawat luto at haing ko, nasasabi ko nandito ako para sa kanila. Bilang panganay, ikas na sa akin ang pagiging maalaga. Kaya manon na rin ang tawag nila sa akin dito. Part ito ng pagiging world class, ngayong global Filipino talent, hindi lang para sa iba, pero para sa ating din. Ito ang paghatid ng ginhawa at aruga sa mga taong may mahal din sa buhay tulad ko. Abilidad itong makita ang sarili sa gitna ng lahat at masabing nasa tamang lugar ako at ginagawa ko ang lahat. Thank you. If I could now ask the Secretary to present the proposed resolution on this item and the voting results. Um, Mr. Chairman, 
management is proposing the adoption of resolution number S-02-2021 for the noting of the corporation's annual report and the approval of the, of the consolidated audited financial statements of the corporation and its subsidiaries as of December 31, 2020, as audited by its external auditor, CCIP Gores, Belayo and Company. The resolution is shown on the screen. On the voting results, stockholders owning 666,288,667 shares, or 99.95% of the voting shares represented in this meeting have voted for the adoption of the resolution. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, resolution number S-02-2021 has been approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. We now move on to the next item on the agenda, the ratification and approval of all the acts of our Board of Directors and Officers since our annual stockholders meeting on April 24, 2020, until today. Uh, Mr. Masura, will you please explain this matter and present the proposed resolution uh, together uh, with the voting results thereon? Mr. Chairman, our Board of Directors and Management seek ratification of all the acts and resolutions of the Board executive committee and other board committees exercising powers delegated by the board which were adopted from april 24 2020 until today these acts and resolutions are reflected in the minutes of the meetings and they include the election of officers members of the board committees and lead independent director approval of the amended bylaws appointment of attorneys in fact and authorized signatories capital allocation and disbursement of funds to subsidiaries, treasury-related matters, declaration of cash dividends, and matters covered by disclosures to the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Philippine Stock Exchange. Stockholders' ratification is also being sought for all the acts of our officers performed in the general conduct of our business or in accordance with the resolutions of the board the executive committee and other board committees and of our bylaws from April 24, 2020 today. These acts were performed to implement the resolution of the board or its committees or as part of the corporation's general conduct of its business. We are showing on the screen resolution number S-03-2021, Mr. Chairman. On the voting results, Stockholders owning 666,113,265 shares, or 99.92% of the voting shares represented in this meeting have voted for the adoption of resolution number S-03-2021. Therefore, the resolution has been adopted. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, the next order of business is the election of seven members of the Board of Directors for the ensuing year. Mr. Antonio Jose Periquet, Chairperson of the Corporate Governance and Nomination Committee, uh, will please explain this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ayala Corporation is committed to maximizing long-term stockholder value and recognizes that this begins with the proper mix of directors. A well-balanced and diverse board that addresses the needs of the corporation, maintains its independence, and has the necessary expertise, experience, and fresh perspective ensures proper performance of the board's role, particularly in guiding management and managing risks. In turn, this assures the corporation's long-term sustainability in a dynamic business landscape. Guided by the foregoing, Mr. Chairman, and in accordance with our bylaws, revised corporate governance manual, and charter of the board of direct directors, the corporate governance and nomination committee of the board has ascertained that the following seven duly nominated stockholders, including the nominees for independent directors, can add value and contribute independent judgment to the formulation of sound corporate strategies and policies for the corporation and are qualified to serve as directors of the corporation for the ensuing term. Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala, Fernando Zobel de Ayala, Rizalina G. Mantarin, Delfin L. Lazaro, Keiichi Matsunaga, 
Antonio Jose U. Periquet and Cesar P. Ponsin. Ms. Monterrey and yours truly have been nominated as independent directors. All of the nominees have given their consent to their respective nominations. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anton. Uh, Mr. Secretary, may we have the results of the election? Mr. Chairman, each of the seven nominees for directors has garnered at least $613,514,076 votes. Given this, I certify that each of the nominees has received enough votes for election to the board, and accordingly, that resolution number S-04-2021 has been approved. We're showing resolution number S-04-2021 on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you also, Mr. Secretary. The next item on the agenda is the election of the corporation's external auditor. Uh, for this, if I could request uh, Mrs. Rizalina, uh, G. Mantaring, Chairman of the Audit Committee, uh, to please present. The Audit Committee exercises oversight over the corporation's external auditor by, among others, assessing its integrity and independence and the effectiveness of its audit process. This is critical given the key role of the external auditor in undertaking an independent audit of the corporation and in providing an objective assurance on the corporation's financial statements. Mr. Chairman, in the performance of this oversight function, the audit committee evaluated the performance of our present auditor, the firm of CCIP, Gores, Velayo and Company during the past year, and the committee was satisfied with their performance. The committee and the board of directors have thus agreed to endorse for a stockholder's approval the election of CCIP, Gores, Velayo and Company as our external auditor for 2021 for an audit fee of 6,361,600 pesos inclusive of value-added tax. Uh, thank you very much, Risa. Um, Mr. Secretary, kindly present the proposed resolution on this item and the voting results. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, our Board of Directors and Management are proposing the adoption of Resolution Number S-05-2021 for the election of the Corporation's External Auditor and the fixing of its remuneration. The resolution is now being shown on the screen. I am pleased to report, Mr. Chairman, that the stockholders owning 664 million 738,963 shares, or 99.72% of the total voting shares represented in this meeting, voted in favor of resolution number S-05-2021. Thus, resolution number S-05-2021 has been approved, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Secretary, are there other matters that require consideration from the stockholders? There is none, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if, if I may mention, uh, the stockholders were given the opportunity to submit proposals for agenda item, but we did not receive any. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. So at this point, we will now address questions and comments uh, from the stockholders. Our Head of Investor Relations, uh, Ms. Javanir. Uh, we'll read aloud the questions and comments together with the names of the stockholders who sent them. Uh, as mentioned uh, by Mr. Mosura earlier, management will reply by email to questions and comments not taken up during this, this meeting, but of course we'll try and address as many uh, as we can now. So if I can turn uh, the floor over to you, Celeste. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First question comes from stockholder Annabel Tapang. What changes can be expected from the transition of the CEO role from Jaime to Fernando? Yeah, well, I think uh, under the circumstances, it's best that Fernando uh, address that question, uh, Fred. Yes. Um, so as our chairman uh, mentioned earlier, um, he will be focusing his attention uh, through his positions as chairman and vice chairman of the many uh, subsidiaries within the Ayala Group um, and support management uh, through that. He will also be focusing more on, on issues of governance, as, as well as our connections to the many, many stakeholders that we have uh, within the Ayala Group. Uh, on my side, I will um, assume the responsibility for day-to-day -day, uh, operations. I will, of course, 
want to uh, strengthen and continue to maintain uh, leadership in all the sectors uh, that we are involved in. Uh, but what we will also be doing is looking more sharply at our uh, portfolio. So we will uh, be focusing on op optimizing returns from the existing businesses, uh, apply a highly disciplined approach uh, to capital uh, allocation, and look for opportunities for value realization initiatives to fund future investments. Uh, thank you, Fernando. Uh, Celeste? Second question comes from stockholder Julianne Bellarmino. What is the status of Ayala's vaccination program? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to address that. Um, you know, we did uh, uh, launch uh, the Ayala vaccine and immunization program led by uh, uh, our team at AC Health and the uh, Ayala Group HR Council to inoculate all employees. Uh, we have procured a total of 1 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines, inclusive of the donation uh, that we have opted to make to the government based on their requirements. Um, these were part of uh, tripartite agreements. These 1 million doses uh, procured uh, should be sufficient to inoculate employees or dependents, uh, partner contractors, as well as communities. Um, these should be coming in uh, around the June level based on our current plans. Uh, on the vaccine administration, uh, as of the end of March, uh, more than 2,000 PolyMed employees uh, have been vaccinated already with AstraZeneca uh, vaccines uh, from the WHO's COVAX facility and the Sinovac vaccines from the Chinese government. Um, and uh, further, AC Health has launched COVID Shield, the COVID-19 vaccine administration program, uh, with a goal to administer up to 10,000 doses a day or 1 million doses within uh, 2021. Uh, so for this purpose, uh, our AC Health team has been busy. Uh, at this time, it's set up 20 mega vaccination sites in key cities nationwide, leveraging its telco, polymed, and generica networks, and also health uh, now is being used, its telemedicine app, in partnership with GLOBE uh, to serve as a platform uh, for mass listing scheduling, uh, patient records, and post-vaccine surveillance aligned with the government standard system. So it's a, it's a big initiative on our part, and, uh, and uh, uh, we're quite dedicated to make sure that this happens, not only for the employees, but for their families uh, as well. I hope that addresses that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next question comes from stockholder James Irwin Villarin. This pandemic has brought the Philippine economy to its knees. Do you see any silver lining in our situation today? Um, I think, uh, 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 Fernando, you've been in the best position to address that. Yes, I, th I think I think we've had um, opportunities here uh, to really change the way we do uh, business in the group. Uh, so the whole digitalization effort uh, really has been vastly uh, accelerated. Uh, because of the uh, pandemic and, and the current needs uh, to do business. I think I'd also like to add that there's been a very significant change in the attitudes between the private sector and government. You've, you've seen probably uh, the strongest uh, collaboration ever uh, between these two sectors in terms of uh, solving uh, the country's problems. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Fernando Celeste. Thank you. Um, next question comes from stockholder Maria Paula Romero. What areas is Ayala looking at as potential new investments given the shifts in consumer behavior brought about by this pandemic? Um, uh, Fernando, uh, would sure. you like to address that issue? Um, I think what I'd like to mention is I think we will see a period here where we will be mainly focusing on our current businesses. Uh, there are no imminent plans to enter new sectors uh, right now, and, and we've got plenty to handle uh, with our existing uh, businesses, uh, continuing to strengthen them, expand. Um, we feel our, our uh, robust balance sheet has enabled us to continue executing on our investment pipeline. And as we mentioned in our respective speeches, we're cautiously optimistic about the country's economic trajectory as the national vaccination uh, program is, is rolled out. Uh, we also mentioned that we have a very ambitious uh, capex uh, for the year. It's 196 uh, billion. Um, much of this will go to residential projects of Ayala land, uh, as well as uh, critical infrastructure rollout uh, for GLOBE. Um, and we will, of course, uh, continue to pursue uh, the opportunities within the energy, healthcare, and logistics uh, space, and, and, and hope to continue to grow those uh, aggressively. 
Uh, Celeste? Um, there's a three questions sent in by stockholder Alfred Ryderer. Uh, his first question is, at today's annual stockholders meeting, one of your foreign shareholders, the Norwegian Government Pension Fund, one of the biggest sovereign wealth funds in the world, is voting against you and Mr. You being Mr. Chairman and Mr. Antonio Jose Periquet. This negative vote is based on conflict of interest, as you can read on their website. Was this topic ever raised during any board meeting? Did the board discuss the issue with any dissenting shareholders? Yeah, no, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, it, did, it did come in, um, you know, last night, um, and I had a chance to glance at it. Uh, but let me just start off by saying that Ayala has in place a conflict of interest policy to address any potential and actual conflicts uh, of interest situation. Uh, moreover, we have a board charter, of course, a manual uh, of corporate governance that guides the actions of our boards, uh, whose members have always uh, exercised uh, independent judgment, regardless of the type of uh, directorship. Um, I did check uh, what the Norwegian, it came in uh, last night, so my apologies, but I did have a chance to glance at it. And it said there in their, um, uh, their complaint, a majority of shareholder elected board members in a non-controlled company should be independent of management, dominant shareholders, and related parties. Uh, I do believe Mr. Periquet uh, fulfills uh, the condition of, uh, of being independent. So uh, um, uh, I'm not quite sure what the concern was, but despite that, uh, all these other policies of the board are followed. Uh, the second one, with respect to myself, um, I think uh, the gentleman in question takes uh, objection to my being chairman and CEO uh, at the same time, um, although I will be transitioning from this role, as I think everybody now knows, so that should give him some comfort. Um, uh, we have had a, a clear definition and delineation of functions and responsibilities of the two positions uh, over time uh, to allow performance uh, that is separate um, and designated, of course, a lead independent director as well as recommended by good governance uh, practices, and, and we do need a uh, a distinct separation uh, between what the board does and, um, and, and what management does. Uh, on top of that, uh, uh, Mr. Lassero is, is uh, independent chairman of the finance committee, um, and so all our investments also, of course, to him as chairman uh, before they go to the board. We've taken as many steps as we can uh, to create um, independence on that. But as I said, um, I will be relinquishing uh, the role of uh, a CEO. So, uh, on that issue, uh, Fernando will be taking that on, and there will be a, a separation between the chairman role and the CEO role. I hope um, that satisfies uh, the gentleman in question. Um, I think you mentioned three questions, Celeste. Um, uh, what were the yes, other ones? Uh, his second question is, Ayala Corporation, is, is as the controlling shareholder of Manila Water, approved the issuance of new shares of Trident Water Company at approximately 50% of the book value, and therefore diluting the value of the shares held by minority shareholders of Manila Water dramatically. I would like to ask each independent director to answer individually and to tell me why this is in the interest of minority shareholders. Well, uh, um, uh, let, let me just turn it to Fernando, who I think can address all those issues. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, uh, this is a Manila Water um, uh, decision, uh, so it was made by, by the board of Manila Water. Um, I'd like to remind everyone about the crisis that we faced at the time. Uh, not only was there an overall water shortage uh, in Manila, but the, uh, because of the regulatory uh, uh, pressure that we were facing, the price uh, of Manila Water went to an all-time low of uh, just over five pesos and hovered in that uh, area for a period of time and then and then was somewhere within the six to eight uh, pesos after that. Trident signed an agreement with Manila Water to subscribe to common shares at a subscription price of uh, 13 uh, pesos. Prior to that uh, agreement, as I said, the, the price was much, much lower. So we feel that it was fair at the time. We also feel that they bring enormous uh, value as a strategic partner uh, to the group given their, um, their operations globally, their port operations, their knowledge uh, of so many businesses uh, and, and countries uh, internationally, uh, where they, they can help us find opportunities, and also uh, the knowledge that they have for running regulatory uh, businesses in the Philippines. So I, I, I feel we definitely made an excellent strategic uh, decision uh, to bring them in as partners. And I, I foresee uh, a great future for Manila Water with them as partners. Uh, thank you, uh, Fernando. Uh, Celeste? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, his third question is, while I fully understand that the current situation requires to hold today's stockholders meeting virtually via Zoom, I don't understand why during the past 12 months, the company was not able to prepare a better setup and why shareholders cannot ask questions directly during the meeting in the same way as it is done by a lot of international companies. Yeah, uh, uh, the gentleman in question clearly that doesn't live in the Philippines. You know, this has been a, um, uh, a, a difficult time uh, for the country. Um, I think I mentioned in my remarks that the health uh, of our employees and the people who surround uh, the Ayala Group is of the utmost importance. Um, I think it's been made very clear by all government agencies, by health authorities, even our own health group, uh, that meeting in groups, uh, especially large groups, should be avoided. Uh, it's not only a request from the government, it's also something that we believe, um, you know, is important. Um, I think uh, the use of technology uh, has been adopted and accepted by the government uh, and that's encouraged, actually, uh, for all of us. I think this has been a very efficient way of continuing uh, to serve the needs of our stockholders, uh, answer their questions, give them the information they need, and at the same time, keep everybody safe. So uh, um, I hope uh, the gentleman in question will understand that uh, uh, we believe uh, actually quite strongly that this has been the right step to take. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me now move on to a set of questions sent in by stockholder Ishmael Tanua. We may not be able to uh, respond to all of his questions, but we will try to do so via email. But let me raise uh, some questions now. Uh, on AC Infra, is Ayala or Naia Consortium planning to participate in the bidding of the Sangley International Airport? Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, maybe I can address that. Uh, you know, we did have a consortium. Uh, uh, we, we tried to adjust it to the changing times. We tried to dialogue uh, uh, with the government uh, at the time. Uh, we were not able to uh, reach an agreement um, on, on a, the risk-reward equation, uh, so we backed off. We remain close as a consortium. I think we would be keen uh, to get together again if, if, if so warranted and if the opportunity arose. Uh, but right now, there is no plan uh, to, be, uh, to bid for signing. His second question is uh, on DPI. The newly appointed president of PPI said the bank is interested in a bid for the retail banking operations of Citibank. For clarification, is PPI planning to have more than 60% of equity in Citibank operations in the Philippines or just the whole retail banking operations of Citibank? Um, I don't know. Is, uh, is Mr. Linkalco uh, available? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Great. Uh, TG, would you mind addressing this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Kanua, as Citibank uh, uh, announced, uh, they are planning to exit their Philippine operations and that they will be selling um, globally 13 uh, businesses. Uh, we, Citibank runs an excellent operations in the Philippines, which we believe are complementary to PPI's operations, uh, and therefore we would be interested. However, as to the extent as to what that interest would be or what, what they are selling, uh, we will still need to wait for Citibank to reach out to us directly. At that point, we will make a determination of whether we will participate or not. But it is an excellent business, and it is something complementary to PPI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, no, thanks also, PG. Uh, Celeste? There's a, one last question from stockholder Dia Lim. Uh, if a subsidiary's management committee is seen to be violating its own internal controls and protocols, what is Ayala's responsibility or oversight? I think well, I think, um, uh, I, I think we know we have proper governance, um, you know, in, in place uh, and to the stockholder in question. I, I think uh, that is a strong one. We have a strong audit function uh, as well in place. Uh, we follow uh, the highest standards uh, that we can. So if there are issues uh, that we find, um, then we address them uh, at the board level. Each independent board uh, has its own independence and, and, uh, and uh, we make sure uh, that the structure of those boards and the mixture of executives um, uh, who represent uh, stockholders of those boards uh, follow uh, specific actions and, and follow uh, globally accepted government standards. We also set new policies when they need to be set, um, and we uh, execute them across all the different boards across the group. So uh, we take these matters seriously, and uh, if there was a company uh, that we felt uh, was having a problem with one kind or another, then uh, we would find a way to address it uh, uh, through the respective boards.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was the last question we see prior to the cut of time. And, and, and for the, the other questions that we weren't able to address in this session, we will do so via email. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Celeste. So uh, to the other stockholders who've asked some questions, uh, I hope we can address them by email. But uh, I think, as you can see, uh, we have the capacity here to, to address issues and, and hope that's to be uh, satisfactory uh, to, to, to everyone. Um, I, I did want to make, uh, before we adjourn, I did just want to make some uh, a couple of last statements, if, if everyone will allow me. I know it's been a long morning. Um, uh, and I'd like to take an opportunity to recognize someone uh, quite special, uh, Mr. Javier uh, P. Loinas, uh, who stepped down uh, from the Ayala board in December last year uh, for health reasons. And uh, if everyone might allow me uh, to just say a couple of words on his behalf, he's been a very important part uh, of our history. Javier has been with the Ayala Group, uh, believe it or not, for 40 years, uh, having led BPI as its CEO uh, for 22 years. As a mem He was also a member of Globe uh, Telecom Boards for 13 years, um, and he was a member of the Ayala Group for 14 years. Um, under his leadership, uh, BPI cultivated the strong credit culture that the bank is known for today and built its reputation as a safe haven uh, during times of crisis. He steered BPI to become one of the largest banks in the country through both organic expansion and acquisitions. Uh, he not only built up BPI's leadership in the corporate banking sector, but brought BPI into the consumer space um, with BPI Family Bank. Uh, under his leadership, uh, BPI led the technology and operational transformation of the domestic banking industry. We're absolute leaders uh, at that time, thanks to his leadership, when he introduced ATMs uh, in the country. He also pioneered the concept of domestic bank assurance by taking stakes in insurance brokerage, life and non-life insurance companies, and even engineered the merger of the three leading reinsurance companies um, in the country. As a member of Ayala's board and chair of the audit committee just until uh, last year, Javier was a trusted advisor and consistently demonstrated a high level of objectivity and independence in providing guidance and foresight uh, to management. Ayala, BPI, uh, and Globe uh, will always be grateful uh, for Javier's leadership and, of course, his mentorship. Uh, many of us, uh, myself included, uh, at Ayala, BPI, and Globe have worked with him, for him, and in so doing, uh, have learned much, including the value of one's principles, character, and word of honor. Javier has been an extraordinary influence across the Ayala group and has been a, of great personal help to me um, uh, during my stint as CEO. I'm deeply grateful to him. And I wanted to wish him uh, a quick recovery uh, from his illness. And, and, and so very sorry that he had to drop out of the board without all of us having a chance to thank him properly. I use this occasion uh, to do so uh, and to thank him for all his years of service and his personal friendship uh, to all of us. Um, that concludes uh, this morning's uh, proceedings. Um, and the meeting is hereby adjourned. The link to the audio and video recording of this meeting will be posted on our website, stockholders may raise any issue or clarification and concern about this meeting within two weeks from the posting of the link by sending an email to corporate secretary at ayala.com.ph, this is on the screen. We thank you, all of you, uh, for joining us today. You know, we are all beset by several challenges and uh, the arrival of vaccines are giving us uh, much hope uh, that, uh, you know, this health issue uh, will slowly uh, get to be behind us. Um, We've learned lessons, I guess, from this crisis uh, and this experience of resilience, compassion, commitment, uh, collaboration, and gratitude uh, that we hope will sustain us and give us a chance to rebuild uh, to a better normal. But more than anything, I thank all of you uh, for joining us here today. Uh, thank you uh, for your support over the years, and thank you uh, for remaining interested uh, in Ayala Corporation. Uh, I wish you all well, and please uh, all stay safe. Thank you very much.